Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cent Nintendo slash gaming video for this week, over the week of March 15th to, 24, to the 21st, where I take a look at some of the stories that caught my attention and give you my thoughts and my opinion about them. Um, and we do have five to cover and all that stuff, including the situation in regards of Gamescom 2020 this year and the response to the folks who are handling Gamecom. Um, have to say about it. We also had Nintendo actually had their first direct or shall I say their first indie world for 2020 and there are some games that stood out though and some that that stood out for me the most though. We also know that Xbox, uh, Microsoft spilled the beans on more information about the Xbox Series X and and Sony spilled the beans for the PS5 as well even though some people are kind of criticizing the way uh, Sony handled it though. And of course, um, GameStop is also facing um, backlash because of you know what's been going on recently, th though, and all that stuff. Um, and and of course, before I begin to any of the stories, I just want to let you guys know I'm doing okay and everything is fine, despite um, recently out here in California, where recently there's been sort of a somewhat of a lockdown or anything like that and all that stuff. But you know what? Everything's fine. I'm doing okay. My family's doing perfectly fine, though. I was able to go for a walk this morning without really any I issues or any anything that's going on, all that stuff. Right now, I'm approaching the whole situation as trying to do the best I can um, to go about my day-to-day -day life despite what's going on, but still keeping an eye on the situation, monitoring it very carefully, and all that stuff. And of course, you know, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Hand sanitizers can also be very effective and helpful, but hand sanitizers should never be treated as a replacement for using soap and water, you know, washing your hands and so forth. Uh, before we get started with the with our five story five stories out there, I'm gonna do a quick rundown on the quick my two cents stories, which uh, certainly some of these definitely did get some of my attention though. We learned that Night Dive, the studio that did the remake of or at least the enhanced port of Turok 1 and Turok 2 Seed of Evil is announcing that they are going to do a remaster of the acclaimed game um, Shadow Man which is certainly is nice and that's going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch and I also believe other systems as well PS4, Xbox One and PC. Uh, we also learned that apparently NVIDIA GeForce now is certainly doing very well. Um, they've sold out of the Founders Edition, at least in Europe. Um, supposedly, it could happen here in North America soon and all that stuff. So, at least according to what NVIDIA is saying, it's doing well for them, which, honestly, I think it's good. I like their cloud streaming service. I think it's... I enjoyed the way, the approach they are handling it, though. Um, hopefully, this will convince Bethesda, 2K, and Square Enix, and other developers to maybe and even Activision Blizzard to maybe rethink, perhaps pulling out of GeForce Now probably wasn't a good idea and so forth. We'll have to wait and see, but for now though, it seems as though, according to NVIDIA, GeForce Now is doing um, very well. Um, we also learned that Amazon Mexico, along with other places, are put have a launch date for supposedly Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Supposedly, if I remember hearing this correctly, May 29th, while Nothing's official at this time, though. Um, hopefully, we'll start hearing a concrete information soon. Maybe if these rumors are true about a Nintendo Direct, um, I believe next week or something like that. Um, if that happens, maybe we'll finally get a official concrete launch date for Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which is a remake of the first Xenoblade Chronicles game. And if that one does well... Um, I'm open to hopefully them bringing Xenoblade Chronicles X over to Nintendo Switch. That that would be nice if they could do that, too. And last but not least, um, we have reports coming out that Sony may be looking into buying the rights of Metal Gear, Silent Hill, and possibly Castlevania from Konami, though. So, although, we didn't, although there's no official concrete information at this time, um, I will say that I'm kind of mixed on this. On one hand, I'm a little disappointed. I a little would be I would find it a little bit unfortunate if it turns out that Sony grabs the rights, considering that the games have been appeared on multiple systems, including Castlevania starting out on, you know, the original NES and so forth. But on the other hand, given the direction Konami has been going lately, the reputation they have earned and all that stuff, I think it would be better to give the series to someone else who 
actually will actually use that license and not for those pinko machines and all that um bs so I, i'm kind of mixed on this one if this turns out to be true but we'll have to wait and see about that <clears throat> Okay, uh, with the quick My Two Cent part now out of the way, we'll get started with our five stories that we're going to talk about. And we're going to start with the first one, and that has to do with um, Gamescom 2020. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware of that we've been seeing a lot of cancellations of events and all that stuff. I'm sure most of you by now are fully aware of what the, why, and for the reason, and why, though. I mean, although... Unfortunately, YouTube doesn't want people saying the word because they'll have their videos demonetized, which personally, I think that's ridiculous. That's a sideboard note. But either than that, though, we've seen like um, GDC had been rescheduled recently, though. Um, we've learned about E3, which originally they were moving ahead with it to be held in Los Angeles. But now that's been postponed and all that stuff. And hell, even non-gaming events like out here in California, Coachella and Stagecoach which is sort of, Stagecoach is sort of the Coachella, but for those who are into country music, that's been canceled because of the whole situation and all that. But it seems as though Gamescom um, is still, at least seems to be um, moving forward, for now at least though. In an article from Games Radar, um, it reads that, quote, Gamecom, the annual gaming expo, is still scheduled to take place this year according to its organizers. The show that which takes place in Kogan, C-O-L-O-G-N-E, apologize if I'm not saying the, the name correctly, Germany falls outside of the time zone of current restrictions placed on the city. The announcement has come despite the ongoing spread of, you know what disease we're talking about, across most of Europe and the rest of the world. In a new statement posted on Twitter today, the official Gamescom account said that the event is currently not affected by Germany's ban on major events of over 1,000 participants, which is set to last until the end of April. Um, they'll have the update, and I'll read you the update in just a minute. Um, Gamescom 2020 takes place in August, though its organizers stress that the health of all trade fair visitors and, and partners is our top priority, and we'll continue to monitor the situation on to a day and day basis so last year gamescom xl saw almost 600,000 visitors in attendance making it one of the most popular gaming events of the industry with e3 2020 cancel among a number of other trades and esports events over the summer the pro the prospects of this year's gamecom aren't looking so good still the latest update stress that the show hasn't been canceled just yet the show organizers also promised that full refunds will be issued to ticket buyers should a decision to eventually be made to shut it down they'll say and they'll keep you up posted uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated as soon as we hear anything more and according to what um gamescom wrote on a on their twitter account they it reads quote dear community we are currently receiving equities about the pos uh, e-n-q-u-i-r-i-e-s apologize i'm not saying it incorrectly about the possibility threat of the you know what virus we're talking about could affect gamescom we take this topic very seriously because of the health of all trade fair visitors and partners is our top priority. On, 10 on, on March 10th, 2020, the city of Kogan banned all major events with more than 1,000 participants up to and include a and, up and including. And then on and four on April 10th, 2020, on the basis of a decrease issued by the state government on the same day. Since GameCon takes place at the end of August 2020, we are currently not affected by this disease. However, we will, of course, follow the recommendations of the responsible authorities regarding the major events, evaluate them on a daily basis, and make our decisions after careful considerations. The preparations for GamesCon 2020 are, co are continuing as planned according to the current status for the determined date. Should GamesCon be postponed or canceled, um, all tickets purchased of the official ticket shop will be reimbursed for the already paid visit visitor tickets. Voucher codes lose their variety and will be made available again for the new event. We look forward for you and your participation. So it looks as though as of right now, Gamescom is still going on, at least for the moment though. But honestly, I would not be shocked if we hear it get postponed or anything like that. I mean... 
no one knows if we're going to be in this situation all the way up to August or not. I mean, it's a possibility, but we just don't know at this time. And given how the kind of mindset we saw with the ESA in regards of E3, where they were going to continue to moving ahead. But once this whole situation with the virus started to get serious and all that stuff, they had to postpone um, E3 um, this year. I would not be shocked if we hear something similar to that with Gamescom uh, 2020. Again, too early to tell at this time, but we're going to have to wait and see. So overall, for now, Gamescom 2020 is um, still on for August, but don't be surprised if that changes or if we hear something like it's been, <clears throat> excuse me, either been canceled or rescheduled due to what's going on all over the world, going all over the world at, <clears throat> excuse me, at this time. Okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, we're gonna get to part two, and this one has to do with the indie world or the nindies, as they used to call it. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our My Two Cent video, and for this one, we're gonna be taking a look at the Nintendo's Indie World, or what it used to be called, the Nindies and all that stuff. An odd name, but <laughs> it is what it is. So, obviously, for the first two months so far, people, a lot of Nintendo fans have been anticipating, you know, like a Direct and all that stuff. Because up to this point, though, the only big game, at least for the summer for now, though, is Animal Crossing um, New Horizon. I apologize if I'm not saying the title wrong or anything like that. So... Uh, it, it, we've been kind of been waiting for the next direct and all that stuff and then later eventually we started to hear rumors about basically Nintendo doing two different kinds of direct an indie one and a you know a regular direct and so forth and while we still wait for the traditional Nintendo direct from Nintendo though we do we did get our first direct the indie worlds and while it may not be while every game they have there isn't going to appeal to everyone there were a couple that I thought stood out for me the most, and I'm definitely going to keep an eye out, especially coming over to the um, Nintendo Switch. Now, as far as a breakdown of the games that are coming out, um, several articles about this. I'll have a link down in the description down below. Um, some of the games they had were Exit the Gungeon, which is basically a sequel to the Enter the Gungeon. Um, I never played the first one or anything like that, but I've heard some good things about that one. Um, the Last Campfire, a new game from Hello Games, the developers of No Man's Sky. Um, Blue Fire, um, Boblo, B-A-L-D-O from Naps Team. Um, I Am Dead from Hollow Point. Uh, B.Arc from TikTok um, Games. Um, Similar and Happiness, um, Freakopolis Part 1 from Explosion um, Games. Summer in Mara from C-H-I-B-I-G. Uh, Quantum League from Nimble Games Entertainment. Um, the Good Life from White Owls. Um, F-A-E-R-I-A from A-B-R-A-K-H-A-M. Apologize if I'm not saying these names I'm correctly. Eldest Souls from Fallen Flag Studios. Moving Out from SMG Studios slash Developer M Games. Um, Sky Racket um, um, from Double Dash Games, and they also announced several other games that they were showing show off, like um, Bounty Battle, um, Blair Witch, Dicey Dungeons, um, Ghosts of a Tales, Sky, Children of the Lights, Super Limited, um, Wingspan. I think there were several others that they showed as well. I think if there, if i remember seeing there were some that i i'm not sure if i missed some of them i might have so i apologize if if i missed some of them though i will say as far as the titles that really stood out um for me the most though i have to say the ones that really stood out for me were titles like um blue fire i mean that one looks really interesting sort of a platformer some hack and slash um some hack and slash elements on it um Baldo, um, that one, that one from, I think, Naps Team, though, that one looks really interesting as 
Um, well, I mean, that one, it, which is an action adventure RPG and all that stuff. So that one is definitely one I'm looking forward to playing. I like, I really like the art style, the anime art style on that one. Um, F A E R I A. Um, that one looks interesting based on what I've seen. It kind of reminds me of Thornbreaker to a certain degree. Now, supposedly that one will have online components and offline mode as well. So that one definitely um, looks nice the most. So I will be looking forward to that one. And I have, oh, and of course, um, the last campfire though, definitely. It's kind of interesting to see that one coming from Hello Games though. I mean, it's not No Man's Sky or anything like that, but it is nice that they're bringing something over to the Nintendo Switch. I mean, who knows? Maybe if this one does well, um, no Man's Skies will um, maybe make its way over to the Nintendo Switch. Supposedly, the game certainly is better now than it was when it originally launched so forth. Um, Quantum Leap doesn't... Re Qu oh, Quantum League, shall I say. Sorry, <laughs> mix that up with the old TV show and all that stuff. Um, I mean, that one's great for those who are into the competitive and all that stuff, you know, like the PvP mode. Doesn't really interest me as much though, but I'm sure there are those who will like that. But I will say my overall, oh, oh, Pixel Junk Eden 2, um, that one looks kind of interesting as well. But I will say my overall impression with the, um, the Nindies or the Indie World Showcase, the first one is, I mean, yeah, there were some games that definitely stick out for me. Um, Enter the Gungeon or Exit the Gungeon, I'll take a look at that one, including the first one, Enter the Gungeon. But like I said, the ones like Baldo, Blue Fire, um, let's see where it is. Yeah, Blue Fire, um, um, Baldo, um, and The Last Campfire definitely are the ones that really caught my attention the most, at least from the Nintendo e Indies world. Now, those are the games I'm definitely going to be um, keeping an eye out um, for. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to get to part three. And this one has to do with uh, basically Microsoft spilling some more information about the Xbox um, Series X. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the Xbox Series X. Now, this week, though, uh, Microsoft started to spill the be more beans and more information about the Xbox Series X as they are moving closer to pushing towards getting the system out for the holidays of 2020. Originally, there was a tweet that came out that was going to come out on Thanksgiving 2020, but Microsoft kind of fixed that and sort of corrected that saying that it's coming out they're aiming for a holidays 2020 and judging by everything that we're, they've now spilled out um some of it we knew some of it some new information all that stuff it does sound like this is going to be a at least according to what microsoft is saying it definitely like i said before it's going to probably sound very powerful um from an article from cnn business it says Quote, Microsoft reveals details about its next generation console, Xbox Series X. Um, it reads, quote, Microsoft revealed the technical specification of its next generation video game console, the Xbox Series S, in a Monday blog post. Although pricing is still unknown, Microsoft says the Series X is coming this holiday season and has several new features that will give it a leg up over older consoles. So, the Series X will be capable of running 4K graphics at 60 to 100, 120 frames per second, meaning the game's graphics should display um, should display clear details and games will appear smoother even during action-packed scenes. The new console is also getting an upgraded graphics card and process processor so it could run more graphic intense games. Notably, high-end PCs are capable of running graphic intense games at as much as 200 frames per second. So this upgrade from Xbox brings it technically technical space specs closer to what's already available on the on the market for PC gamers. Consoles have lagged behind PCs when it comes to providing higher resolution in gaming, but are often more affordable and easy, easier to set up than um, computers, which 
I will say to a certain extent that it's kind of true, though. I mean, obviously for many, they enjoy a lot of people enjoy gaming on PC and all that stuff. And if you know what you're doing, then that's great and all that. But for me, I tend to enjoy consoles a little bit more than PC, right? Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not a PC expert or anything like that. Uh, anyway, continuing on. Like its predecessor, the Xbox One X, the new console has one terabyte of storage, but it has been upgraded for faster loading time. Modern devices have changed our expectations on how quickly you can move between experience or applications. Xbox um, senior, communi senior communication manager wrote in a blog post, most of us want to be able to instantly jump into an experience or return right to where we left off. With the upgrade, Xbox is claiming that it will be possible to play a game to a certain point, turn off the console and perform a system update, and still get back to where you um, left off. Gamers with immense open worlds like Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, Final Fantasy XV, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey could benefit from the fast loading time, Xbox said. Um, the oh, yeah. I, what this person said wrote that Xbox has been working with TV manufacturers for the past two years to make sure displays are ready to support the Xbox Series X. Microsoft is also touring the new console ability to support um, older games. As games gamers themselves, the team understand that we all have our favorite mem memories, franchises, or titles that we want to continue playing even as technology and game design continues to advance. Xbox wrote. Um, since the Xbox series has upgrade storage and overall specs compared to the um, Xbox One, it's easier to support past games. They gave us the Xbox One X and was and it was like we got this big playground to play with, said um, Peggy, Peggy Ello, Principal Program Manager, lead, lead of Backwards Capacity in a blog post. Then we got the Xbox Series X and it was like we had this whole amusement park um, to play in. And according to what Microsoft is saying, um, they're saying the um, it, the CPU is eight cores, 3.8 gigahertz, 3.6 gigahertz with SMT, custom Zen 2 CPU. The GPU is 12 teraflops, 52 CU, um, 1.825 1. gigahertz, custom Randa um, 2 GPU. The die size is 360.5. 45 mm the processor the process is a 7 nm enhanced the memory is a 16 gigabyte gddr6 uh, with 320b uh, bus the memory bandwidth is 10 gigabytes and uh, 560 byte 560 gigabyte x 6 gigabytes and 300 336 gigabyte x the eternal storage is one terabyte custom nvme ssd um, the I.O. thought put is 2.4 gigabyte raw, 4. Point, um, and also 4.8 um, gigabyte compressed, I meant the 2.4 gigabyte raw, compressed with custom hardware, decompressed in block, the ex expandable storage, um, one terabyte um, expanded card matches eternal storage exactly, um, the eternal storage, UBS um, 3.2 external HDD support, Octomy Octopal um, Drive, 4K UHD Blu-ray Drive, and Performance Target, 4K at 60 FPS up to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, up to um, 120 FPS. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, this definitely is, and based on some of the pictures that they showed of this with the ray tracing on and off with their tech demo, I mean, yeah, I mean, this definitely sounds... This is definitely going to sound like a beast and all that stuff. That's um, for certain. And it's going to be... And honestly, it definitely sounds... And I may have said this before. It sounds more and more like Microsoft is taking this more serious now than they were with the um, Xbox One at the time when they were promoting the whole, you know, all-in-one with the Kinect and the whole TV and gaming and all that stuff, which... Well, let's just say that didn't exactly sit very well. So, 
obviously they're taking this very serious this time around um it's going to be it's going to be a very interesting next generation with the ps5 and the xbox um xbox series x though i mean it's gonna be really interesting to see what the games are going to be capable of and all that stuff and while in to some degree it does sound like it's i mean it does sound like it's currently po more powerful than what's at least currently on the PC market. I, I won't deny the fact that PC will always have some sort of advantage and I'm sure we're gonna see graphic cards and a lot of stuff look more powerful than what the Xbox One, and the Xbox Series X and what the PS5 is. But for from a console's perspective though, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, next generation, the, the next generation is gonna be different. I mean, Sony's gonna find themselves, maybe it's possible Sony could find themselves in a much different position than they were with the PS4 where because Microsoft and Nintendo kind of shot themselves in the foot with Microsoft with the Xbox One and Nintendo with the Wii U, Sony dominated with the PS4. Next generation, um, I would not be surprised if things are going to be um, a bit um, different. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break and when we get back, we're gonna get to part four. And this one, it has Sony now actually revealing some more information about the PlayStation 5. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part four of our My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look now at at least the information that has come out with the PS5. Now, there have been some information here or there about the PS5 and all that stuff, but Sony didn't really start spilling the beans about it about it the most compared to what Microsoft was doing with the Xbox One Series X. So it was kind of interesting when Sony decided to announce and start spilling the beans about the PS5, perhaps maybe in response to Microsoft spilling the beans with the Xbox Series X earlier. And so basically they did their own presentation of it though. And while the presentation itself, the response has kind of been mixed and all that stuff, we did get a very um, good amount of information indeed about the system. And it does sound like, like the Xbox One Series X, this one certainly is going to be um, powerful, what to say the least. In a blog post by uh, by Sony under their PlayStation um, blog, um, it reads that, quote, we know that fans are excited to find out more about our next generation console, PlayStation 5, and exactly how it will bring about the future of gaming. Today, we're proud to, re to reveal more details behind the technical and hardware components that make the PS5, such as innovative and powerful platform, the ultra high speed SSD in inter interrogated custom IO system, custom AMD GPU with ray tracing and high immense 3D audio. With these capability, PS5 will allow developers to maximize their creativity, build expansive worlds and new play, new play enhance the games they design. They talked about the presentation, they have the video on, on there, although the video is pretty much on YouTube and all that stuff. It reads that as Mark discussed in his presentation, PS5 ultra high speed SSD and integrated custom IO system were developed with the goal of removing barriers to play, specifically um, loading screens. Developers are able to stream assets into PS5 games at an incredible fast rate, so the PS5 play experience can be seamless and dynamic with near instrumental. Uh, oops, kind of speed that up. Near instrumental fast travel through large game worlds. This enhances this enhanced speed will enable game developers to create larger richer worlds without traditional limitations such as loading times and allow gamers to spend more time gaming than waiting. We also wanted to introduce a new capability with PS5 custom GPU. Additional GPU will allow for higher resolutions in games, but a, ma but a major new feature that benefits the visuals of games even further um, is ray tracing. Ray tracing simulates the way light moves in real life and how it bounces off various surface. Games that take advantage of this feature will render objects much more accurate and and with heightened realism. Water, glass, light reflection, a character's hair, and so on will look even more realistic. 
PS5 will allow gamers to offer a much deeper sense of immense through 3D audio, visuals, of course, in impressive to the gaming experience, but we believe audio plays a cri critical role as well. We want to deliver a compelling audio experience for all users, not just those who own high-end speaker systems. So we design and build a custom engine for 3D audio that is equipped with the power and eff effect efficiency apologize for not saying it correctly for idea audio rendering with 3d audio on the ps5 the sound you hear while um while playing will offer a greater sense of presence and an l-o-c-a-l-i-t-y you'll be able to hear raindrops hitting different surface and around you and you can hear and precisely locate when an enemy is lurking behind you Lastly, we are excited to confirm the backwards compatibility features are working well. We recently took a took a look at the top 100 PS4 titles and as ranked by playtime, and we're expecting almost all of them to be playable at launch on PS5. With four, more than 4,000 games published on PS4, we will continue to test the process and expand backwards compatibility coverage um, over time. Um, so you know, keep an eye date outdate down the road and that stuff but here it's sort of the official specs and all that stuff um as far as the cpu goes it's basically they're saying it's an x86-64 amd resonant zen 2 8 cores 16 thread variables frequency up to 3.5 gigahertz amd raiden r-a-d-e-o-n r-d-n-a 2 based graphic engines Ray tracing acceleration, various both frequencies up to 2.23 gigahertz, 10.3 teraflops, um, GDDR6 16 gigabytes, um, 448 gigabyte bandwidth um, in terms under the system memory. So okay, under the SSD, 825 gigabytes, 5.5 um, gigabyte S read bandwidth raw. Under the PS5 Game Six, it's a Ultra high, ultra HD Blu-ray up to 100 gigabytes um, disc. Um, video out supports a 4K 120 hertz TV, AK TV, VRR, specifically by HDMI, HDMI version 2.1, and the audio is the Tempest um, 3D Audio Tech. Now, as far as the backwards compatibility, um, they kind of updated this though. Um, they basically said, "quote." A quick update on backwards compatibility with all the amazing games. I'm so... <laughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I had a sneeze on that one. Sorry. Uh, update. Um, with all the backwards compatibility... Um, with a quick update on the backwards compatibility, with all the amazing games in the PS4 catalog, we devoted significantly effort to enable our fans to play their favorite play their favorites on PS5. We believe that the overwhelming majority of 4,000 plus PS4 titles will be playable on PS5. We're expecting backwards compatibility titles will run at a boost frequency on PS5 so they can benefit from higher or more stable frame rate and potentially higher resolution. We're currently evaluating um, games on a title by title basis to spot any issues that need adjustments from the original software developer. In the presentation, uh, Mark Cammy, C E R N Y, provided a snapshot into the top 100 most played PS4 titles, demonstrating how well our backwards compatibility efforts are going. We have already tested hundreds of titles and are preparing to test thousands more as we move towards launch. We will provide updates on backwards compatibility, along with much more, um, much more PS5 news in the months ahead. So stay tuned. So apparently there is certainly a lot of information in terms of what the system is going to have into it. And again, it's going to be um, certainly powerful, but I am a little curious about the um, frame rate about it though. They didn't really put out how, if it, how the frame rate is going to be for this game, for the system though. I mean, compared to what Microsoft said with Xbox Series S, we could hit from a 60 to 120 um, frames per second. So I'm a little curious to see if they're going to be able to still hit like, you know, 60 and all that stuff. I assume you probably will and all that. I mean, again, I'm not a tech expert, so I could be wrong, but I assume you will, but it would have been nice if they kind of clear that up. 
I'm glad they kind of cleared up a little bit of the backwards compatibility to a certain degree. Obviously, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that all the PS4 titles are backwards compatibility on on the PS5. We'll have to wait and see about that one. And I'm also a little curious what they're going to do with PS1, PS2, and PS3. Are they going to do, you know, like the PlayStation Now approach on the PS5? So I'm a little curious um, about that. And then, of course, we still don't know what the system is going to look like, let alone what the controller is going to look like. I assume the controller will be similar to that of the DualShock 4 controller, but I'm sure there's going to be some things they may change or certainly like that. So we're still waiting to see what the controller looks like let alone the system itself. Is it going to be small and sleek like the PS4 is? Is it going to be bulky like the PS3 is? Excuse me. Are they aiming for a design similar to what the Xbox Series X looks like or something different? So we'll have to wait and see, but overall, uh, oh, excuse me, sorry, I'm, I'm okay, okay. But overall, definitely a lot more information about the PS5. Definitely sounds like this one, like the Xbox Series X is going to be um, certainly powerful, not sure if it's going to be powerful in the Xbox Series X, but it's definitely going to be a powerful, um, system. Like I said before with the Xbox Series X, it's going to be really interesting to see how things play out, um, this generation, though. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to our fifth and final story, and this has to do with GameStop, um, under fire for um a under fire for what they're doing that apparently has gotten some of their employees concerned and all that and it has to do with the situation that's going on around the world so we'll take a quick break and we will be right back Okay, and we are back with our fifth and final part of our My Two Cent video. Um, and, but before we get started on that one, uh, just to let you know, that was just a sneeze. Nothing to freak out or anything like that, though. It just, I just had to sneeze and all that stuff. So no, nothing, I'm not freaking out or doing anything like that. So just want to let you know about that one. Anyway, we'll get started with our fifth part. And this has to do with GameStop. And I'm sure most of you are aware it has come under fire. Now... GameStop, and it has been reported several times, has been in a very uh, rough spot. There has been issues of declines in sales to, in terms of some of their practices and all that stuff, which has not sat well with some people who used to work at GameStop to some of the customers. Now, just to be clear, I've gone to GameStop before many times. I've shopped there. I met some of the employees. Some of the employees are nice and all that stuff. So I haven't really had a negative experience going to GameStop. That's not to say that there are people who probably did have a negative experience. And I think some of it can fall on the employees and fall on the corporate businesses and all that stuff and their decisions to make. Some of it can also fall on the consumer. So, either, and I do want to point out, not every decision GameStop does is 100% correct all the time. But like I said, I haven't had a negative experience. That said, I don't know whose decision at GameStop was to make this statement in regards of what's going on into the world. But who, whatever it was, this was a piss poor decision on their part and it certainly got GameStop into a whole mess of trouble recently that they had to actually make a statement about it which is basically they are talking about how their store is essential like how supermarkets and uh, pharmacies are and all that stuff to stay open compared to other places that are not essential and well that rubbed people the wrong way, especially when we started hearing stories about people of several stores not having sanitation, like hand sanitizers, cleaning gears, or running out of toilet papers, and that owner, that manager, management has to go out and buy it with their own money and so forth. So it hasn't really sat very well. And this article from Nine to Five Toys kind of explains the situation, at least from what I've seen, read it though, kind of does. In the article, it says, "quote." GameStop deem itself essential retail will not close stores amidst pandemic. Um, 
GameStop has decided it will not heed the government recommendation because of the virus and all that stuff to close retail locations after health officials across the country had issued orders to have all non-essential physical businesses closed in order to slow the spread of the outbreak. GameStop has instructed its employees to do just the opposite. The struggling national retailer has told its workers to leave the store open and ignore official orders as it has now deemed itself an essential, re um, essential uh, retail location. While local, state, and federal government agencies are allowed essential retails to remain open during the crisis, grocery stores, um, pharmaceutical, gas stations, and the like, GameStop seems to think it falls under the category. In a memo sent out to its employees obtained by Kotaku, GameStop explains that it feels it does not need to close retail um, locations because it falls under the falls under that category due to the products it carries. Um, due to the products we carry that enables and enhance our customer experience in working from home, we believe GameStop is classified as an essential retailer and therefore is able to remain open during times. There's been reports they're telling them to um, defy, you know, law enforcement or defy local authorities and so forth. While reports of GameStop's employees being very concerned regarding the business choice to not close retail locations that already hit the internet, the company is also instructing store managers to basically ignore police officers and officials that might enter a specific location to enforce the closure. More specifically, the company has issued a flyer and statement for store man management to um, to to give um, the officials in the event this happens, which is, thank you for what you are doing to keep us um, safe. If you have questions about our store hours, operation, and policy, could I ask you to please call our corporate office? Thank you um, for understanding. Um, um, it says, while clearly the retail has been on a downward spiral lately in terms of the bottom line, we cannot help but think that it taking things a little too far here. It has in introduced a statement regarding reducing store hours, suspending use of trade-ins and more, but it just doesn't seem like enough in this time of crisis. There's no word from the company on whether or not it plans to close retail locations and in the future to take this time and they've recently put out a statement um, updating uh, basically uh, what they are doing such as they are basically um, basically saying that they are distancing a policy up to 10 people in stores including store accessories um, they create a six foot premier perimeter between customers and checkout line reducing our store hours from 12 to 8 um, PM, which will be in place until Sunday, March 29th. Um, they're doing delivery door service to allow customers to pick up their purchase at the front of the door of our U.S. location. Suspending temporary trading, temporary some, our customers and electronic trading until further notice. Postponing all gaming events and midnight launch until further notice. Disable temporarily all interactive game stations in our store. Encouraging customers to leverage our online e-commerce capability and direct delivery to their homes from our warehouse or store. They also said that, quote, that they are providing all our stores with the necessary supplies of disaffected materials and hand sanitizers to frequently clean high-touch surface to kill germs and ensure that our stores are a safe environment for both our customers and store associates. All associates have been instructed to stay home if they are sick and are experiencing any few like symptoms related to you know the virus, no matter how mild, until they have been cleared by medical professionals to return to work. Um, they also remind all customers to consult the CDC um, for this virus symptom information and, re and request that you follow recommended self-quarantine guidelines if you are experiencing any few like symptoms, no matter how mild. Then you can visit. You know, GameStop or the GameStop mobile app to make your video game purchase from the comfort of your home. No, so it's nice that they're finally they gave basically a more proper response to this, but this was seriously, seriously piss poor handling, especially on the corporate office. By making it, it came off this saying that. The way they handled it, though, it came off as like they did not care about their safety of their employees or any or their customers at all. This was a dumb, idiotic move. And for them to make the comment of telling law enforcement to defy them and say basically that, you know, um, no, we're essential, so we should stay open and all that stuff. I mean, that was a dumb, dumb thing for GameStop. 
to really do. And it really puts another black eye on them, especially given some of the reputation that they have earned. Some of it justifiable, and some of it I don't think it is, but this is one of the cases where they absolutely deserve the backlash for what they did. This was a dumb move, and it looks like they decided to do something after they realized that it was starting to hit the fan across the internet and make things worse than it already was. So my overall take is this is for the higher ups at GameStop, the corporate corporate guys up there, that was a stupid, idiotic response to make in a situation um, like this and all that stuff. Not to mention the fact that you have to have management go out with their own money to buy cleaning supplies and all that stuff. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how what's going to happen when Reggie takes over in April and how the situation that GameStop is in. I mean, this that's not a good thing, and he's going to have may have a hard time, especially with the other CEOs that bring in are going to may have a hard time with this one. We'll see what happens then. But overall, very dumb and stupid move at the corporate level at GameStop. Very dumb and stupid move indeed. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about GamesCon 2020 um, still going on as we speak? Um, do you think the event will happen in any way? Or do you think that there is a chance we'll see this event either cancel or postpone and they'll put it on a different um, date? What are your thoughts about the first indie world for 2020? Did any of the games excite you in any way? Was it the game, were there any of these games you're looking forward to or none of these interest you at all? What are your thoughts about the specs for the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5? Do you think these are impressive specs though? Um, do you think we will see these systems launch um, this holiday season in any way? And do you think that chances are the situation is going to be different this time around between the between Sony and Microsoft with the PS5 and Xbox Series X, or do you think it's going to be the same like what we like we're seeing with Xbox One and PlayStation 4? And what are your thoughts about GameStop and how they handle the situation, especially with the whole virus situation um, going on? Do you think some people are blowing it way out of proportion, or do you think people do have a right to be angry at how the corporate heads at GameStop handled the situation, and which I view as was a very piss poor way of handling it though um do you agree with what i said in this video do you disagree do you have a difference of opinion um as always sound off in the comment section below let me know what you think and if you like this video i hope you hit the like button and i hope you do subscribe to my youtube channel if you do make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos i put up also Feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal Me or Patreon. Links will be in the description down below. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day. Um, stay safe out there. Um, and of course, use hand sanitizers when you can. And, and always, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands.